Hey guys, this is one of those projects that I started, I was really excited about, things were going good all the way until they didn't. And I mean, this is cool, it's coming out neat, but it's, it's really not what I had in mind, so I'm gonna try it again, I'm gonna start another build right now. I have never, ever had a piece of steel that warped as bad as this did. This steel went rook like that. This will be another sand my billet. We're gonna do a 15 in 20 outer cladding and a 1084 core. As with any sand my, we're gonna go ahead and cut the pieces, clean them up, and begin to weld them together in an airtight package so we can get it forged together in a seamless billet. So it looks like I'm starting with 10 inches of material before I start forging. Watch close and tell me where I went wrong in the forging process here. Once I get the billet up to heat, I'm going to go ahead and use light taps over the entire surface of the billet to go ahead and set the welds. After the initial welds are set, you'll see I come in with quite a bit more force as I start to forge out this billet. Hey guys, take the time to help me smash the YouTube algorithm and give me a thumbs up on this video if you're enjoying it. After four or five heats of getting the welds set and hammering the billet out, I move over to using my diagonal peen hammer to put some figure in the sand my billet. This causes valleys and peaks, and after I use this and really create some figure, I'll planish the entire build out flat again. At this point in the build, I've decided to go ahead and forge in the bevels to give it a slight taper before I move on to the next step. So I take my hammer and I flip the billet over from side to side and I forge in my bevels. And into the annealing tank it goes. It'll sit here overnight, and this will soften the steel up so that I can move over to the grinder and start cutting the profile out. I thought you guys might want to see my thought process and artistic flow, so I'm going to show you how I draw this knife out. You can see I'm using a chalk pencil which I find quite versatile when you're doing this on a piece of forged material. The chalk fills out nicely and gives you a good line on the grinder. Most of my knives are like this. I just look at the steel, imagine a knife within the piece, and I go ahead and draw it out. I do take note of how long the handle proportion should be first, and then I kind of let the blade fall into place. That looks nice, and I'm going to run with it. Stay tuned for tips on how to finish hybrid handle material. Now since we did weld 360 degrees all the way around the billet, you're going to make sure that you grind off all the way around. If you've run your knife right up to the edge, make sure that you grind all of the weld off. That way you don't get any weld inclusions in the spine of your knife or the cutting edge of the knife. Here it is right before we move into heat treat. You can see that I forged in the bevels as is there's no hammer strikes on the bevel areas. We're going to bring the knife up to temperature slowly, and this is where it all starts to go wrong. We're going to go in for the quench. Everything's seeming okay, feels good, no cracks or pops. Whoa, look at that crazy warp. All the way from the tip to the butt. I have never, ever had a piece of steel that warped as bad as this did. This steel went rook like that. I mean, during forging, I noticed that every time that I would forge it straight, it would air cool and it would curve this way and I'd forge it straight and it'd curve that way and I'd forge it straight and it'd curve that way. And I wasn't really sure how to deal with that. It's such a thin piece of steel that I decided to go ahead and try like a real fast quench in oil, which caused a massive warp and then put it in between these plates and clamp it down to finish cooling. I'm going to pull it out of this. I suspect I'm still going to have a pretty sizable warp even after clamping it like this. So I'll probably end up, you know, creating some sort of jig to use in my tempering cycle to go ahead and take the rest of the warp out. I may or may not even be able to salvage this blank. Like I said, I've never had a piece of steel. I don't care what kind of construction, sand my, laminated, non-laminated, what ever bend or warp like this. I mean, when I put this in the quench, it took on a warp like that right there. I mean, a huge bow from all the way from the back to the front. So we'll see, you know, I've got it clamped in here. 
it's still fairly warm. I'm gonna let it finish cooling off and then we're gonna pull it out and see what kind of warp is in it. Oh, wow. That, uh, that came out straight. Straight as straight could be. That's wild. Who would have? Holy moly! I would have never guessed that. Okay, so it came out pretty straight after the quench and the, and the plate quench, so I'm gonna go ahead and clamp. Yep. Honey, dinner's ready. Quit playing with your toys. You ready? Okay. So it came out pretty straight after the quench and then the plate quench straightening. It was pretty accurate and straight, but just in case to help mitigate any future warps, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it between these to put it through the temper cycle. And I hope that uh, it stays straight through the temper cycle too, we'll see. I kind of wish this knife would keep this really cool color that it took on during the temper cycle, but unfortunately all that's gonna get sanded away. Listen to how quiet and blissfully peaceful the disc grinder is. I didn't even have to mute this clip. It's wonderful. What an amazing tool in the shop. If you're not absolutely in love with hand sanding, this will be your best friend in a knife shop. I'm gonna do an entire tutorial series about how to build one of these, the things involved with using it, all the different tips and tricks that I've picked up while using it. So look forward to that new video coming out soon on my channel. It's actually a pretty good reason for you to subscribe if you're not already. That way you'll be notified when it comes up and I'll probably end up costing you some money. You do still have to hand sand, but it certainly makes things easier. Everything's laid out and ready for glue up. These are cut to shape, drilled my pen holes, cleaned everything with acetone. I'm gonna go ahead and get this glued up and then we'll get it shaped. Time to shape some handles. There you go. Yeah. The very first thing I like to do when I'm starting a handle is clean up all the excess glue shore up the pins, make sure that I've got nice flats to start with. I'll do this and then I'll profile the outer edge of it and then I'll come back and start shaping the handle. You can see I've put my layout lines here. If you haven't seen how I do my layout lines, I've got several handle tutorial videos that show in depth this process. So I'm not gonna go into it here. I'm basically cutting in my flat facets that keep my handles super symmetrical. Once I have all my facets ground in, I put my knife in my knife vise and I start to sand out all the different facets, bringing the resin up to 1200 grit and the wood up to 500 grit, and then I can go ahead and finish everything out. There's a particular order that I like to go through when I'm finishing these hybrid handle scales. The first thing I do is I shape my handles, I sand it out all the way up to 500, and then the wood section all the way out to 500, and then I make sure that the hybrid side is sanded out to 1200 and then I blend the 1200 into the 500. A lot of times you can't sand this type of wood up to 1200. You'll just start smearing the grain around. So really I take the top to 500 and then I take 1200 grit or I take this all the way up to 1200 grit on the hybrid side. Now I will polish this but I don't want to polish it yet. If I take this to the buffer and polish this right now, I'm going to fill all the pores in the wood with polishing compound and it's going to muddy up everything. What I want to do is I want to make this grain pop first. So in this stage, what I like to do is before I do any polishing, I go ahead and I infiltrate the grain with some sort of oil finish. And on this one, I'm going to use a teak oil because it's a really thin penetrating oil like that right there. And so that's going to get nice and deep into the pores of the wood. And I'm going to do this a couple times until the wood won't soak up any more oil. Now this is stabilized wood, but it, for some reason it still does soak up some oil. So I'm going to let, allow it to soak up the oil and uh, infiltrate the grain. Once the oil is fully soaked in and dry, then I will buff the entire handle. Ooh, you can see what it will look like when you put oil on that resin, it really pops. Now, of course, this is kind of dark right here. Let me crank that up so you can see. Um, that resin will pop when I polish it. I'm going to polish this with Mother's Compounds. Since I did go up to 1200 grit, it's not gonna take a lot of polishing. If you take this kind of handle scale to the buffer, 
if one single slit or if you dwell too long in one spot, it'll eat this material away so fast and uh, there's nothing more of a heartbreak than to ruin your project at the buffer right after you've completed it. So you guys could see in my finished project here that one of the mistakes that I made was forging in the bevels on a sand my billet. You should not do that, and this is the prime example. You just don't see much relief between the dissimilar metals because I forged it all the way out to a cutting edge, so when I ground out my bevels, you just don't see that relief anymore. I think this knife came out absolutely wonderful. The design is great. You've got lots of clearance for your knuckles. In the kitchen, that's super important. I am really interested to hear what you guys think caused this knife to warp. I think I got super lucky that it came out straight, but I'm not really sure why it warped in the first place. It's the first time I've ever had a knife take on a severe warp like that. So let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Here's a link to a video that shows how I finished my handles and I think you should go and watch that one next.